snakes are elongated, legless, carnivorous reptiles of the suborder Serpentes. Like all other squamates, snakes are ectothermic, amniot vertebrates covered in overlapping scales. Many species of snakes have skulls with several more joints than their lizard ancestors, enabling them to swallow prey much larger than their heads with their highly mobile jaws. To accommodate their narrow bodies, snakes' paired organs such as kidneys appear one in front of the other instead of side by side, and most have only one functional lung. Some species retain a pelvic girdle with a pair of vestigial claws on either side of the cloaca. Lizards have evolved elongate bodies without limbs or with greatly reduced limbs about 25 times independently via convergent evolution, leading to many lineages of legless lizards. Legless lizards resemble snakes, but several common groups of legless lizards have eyelids and external ears, which snakes lack, although this rule is not universal see Amphisbenia, Dibamidae, and Pygopodidae. Living snakes are found on every continent except Antarctica, and on most smaller land masses. Exceptions include some large islands, such as Ireland, Iceland, Greenland, the Hawaiian archipelago, and the islands of New Zealand, and many small islands of the Atlantic and Central Pacific Oceans. Additionally, sea snakes are widespread throughout the Indian and Pacific Oceans. More than 20 families are currently recognized, comprising about 520 genera and about 3,600 species. They range in size from the tiny, 10.4 cm long Barbados thread snake to the reticulated python of 6.95 m in length. The fossil species Titanoboa cerehonensis was 12.8 m long. Snakes are thought to have evolved from either burrowing or aquatic lizards, perhaps during the Jurassic period, with the earliest known fossils dating to between 143 and 167 Mara ago. The diversity of modern snakes appeared during the Paleocene epoch c. 66 to 56 Mara ago. The oldest preserved descriptions of snakes can be found in the Brooklyn Papyrus. Most species are non-venomous and those that have venom use it primarily to kill and subdue prey rather than for self-defense. Some possess venom potent enough to cause painful injury or death to humans. Non-venomous snakes either swallow prey alive or kill by constriction. Etymology <inaudible> 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 The English word snake comes from Old English snacker, itself from Proto-Germanic asterisk snacken cf. Germanic schnarki, ring snake, Swedish snok, grass snake, from Proto-Indo-European root asterisk s nego, to crawl, to creep, which also gave sneak as well as Sanskrit naga, snake. The word ousted adder, as adder went on to narrow in meaning, though in Old English nadra was the general word for snake. The other term, serpent, is from French, ultimately from Indo-European asterisk serp to creep, which also gave ancient Greek herpo, herpo I crawl. Evolution <inaudible> 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 The fossil record of snakes is relatively poor because snake skeletons are typically small and fragile making fossilization uncommon. Fossils readily identifiable as snakes though often retaining hind limbs first appear in the fossil record during the Cretaceous period. The earliest known true snake fossils members of the crown group Serpentes come from the marine Simoliophyids, the oldest of which is the late Cretaceous Cenomanian age Harsiophus terrasanctus, dated to between 112 and 94 million years old. Based on comparative anatomy, there is consensus that snakes descended from lizards. Pythons and boas primitive groups among modern snakes have vestigial hind limbs, tiny, clawed digits known as anal spurs, which are used to grasp during mating. The families Leptotyphlopidae and Typhlopidae also possess remnants of the pelvic girdle, appearing as horny projections when visible. Front limbs are non-existent in all known snakes. This is caused by the evolution of their hox genes, controlling limb morphogenesis. 
The axial skeleton of the snake's common ancestor, like most other tetrapods, had regional specializations consisting of cervical neck, thoracic chest, lumbar lower back, sacral pelvic, and caudal tail vertebrae. Early in snake evolution, the Hox gene expression in the axial skeleton responsible for the development of the thorax became dominant. As a result, the vertebrae anterior to the hindlime buds when present all have the same thoracic-like identity except from the atlas, axis, and one to three neck vertebrae. In other words, most of a snake's skeleton is an extremely extended thorax. Ribs are found exclusively on the thoracic vertebrae. Neck, lumbar and pelvic vertebrae are very reduced in number only 2 to 10 lumbar and pelvic vertebrae are present, while only a short tail remains of the caudal vertebrae. However, the tail is still long enough to be of important use in many species, and is modified in some aquatic and tree-dwelling species. Many modern snake groups originated during the Paleocene, alongside the adaptive radiation of mammals following the extinction of non-avian dinosaurs. The expansion of grasslands in North America also led to an explosive radiation among snakes. Previously, snakes were a minor component of the North American fauna, but during the Miocene, the number of species and their prevalence increased dramatically with the first appearances of vipers and elapids in North America and the significant diversification of colubridae including the origin of many modern genera such as Nerodia, Lampropeltus, Pituophus, and Pantherophus. Topic. Origins There is fossil evidence to suggest that snakes may have evolved from burrowing lizards, such as the varanids or a similar group during the Cretaceous period. An early fossil snake relative, Nagish Ryanegrina, was a two-legged burrowing animal with a sacrum, and was fully terrestrial. One extant analogue of these putative ancestors is the Elis monitor Lanthanotus of Borneo though it also is semi-aquatic. Subterranean species evolved bodies streamlined for burrowing, and eventually lost their limbs. According to this hypothesis, features such as the transparent, fused eyelids brill and loss of external ears evolved to cope with fossorial difficulties, such as scratched corneas and dirt in the ears. Some primitive snakes are known to have possessed hindlimbs, but their pelvic bones lacked a direct connection to the vertebrae. These include fossil species like Harsiophus, Pachyrachis and Euphordophus, which are slightly older than Najish. This hypothesis was strengthened in 2015 by the discovery of a 113 meters year old fossil of a four-legged snake in Brazil that has been named Tetrapodophus amplectus. It has many snake-like features, is adapted for burrowing and its stomach indicates that it was preying on other animals. It is currently uncertain if Tetrapodophus is a snake or another species, in the squamate order, as a snake-like body has independently evolved at least 26 times. Tetrapodophus does not have distinctive snake features in its spine and skull. An alternative hypothesis, based on morphology, suggests the ancestors of snakes were related to mosasaurs—extinct aquatic reptiles from the Cretaceous—which in turn are thought to have derived from varanid lizards. According to this hypothesis, the fused, transparent eyelids of snakes are thought to have evolved to combat marine conditions corneal water loss through osmosis, and the external ears were lost through disuse in an aquatic environment. This ultimately led to an animal similar to today's sea snakes. In the late Cretaceous, snakes recolonized land, and continued to diversify into today's snakes. Fossilized snake remains are known from early late Cretaceous marine sediments, which is consistent with this hypothesis, particularly so, as they are older than the terrestrial Nagish Ryanegrina. Similar skull structure, reduced or absent limbs, and other anatomical features found in both mosasaurs and snakes lead to a positive cladistical correlation, although some of these features are shared with varanids. Genetic studies in recent years have indicated snakes are not as closely related to monitor lizards as was once believed and therefore not to mosasaurs, the proposed ancestor in the aquatic scenario of their evolution. However, more evidence links mosasaurs to snakes than to varanids. 
Fragmented remains found from the Jurassic and early Cretaceous indicate deeper fossil records for these groups, which may potentially refute either hypothesis. In 2016, two studies reported that limb loss in snakes is associated with DNA mutations in the zone of polarizing activity regulatory sequence (ZRS), a regulatory region of the sonic hedgehog gene which is critically required for limb development. More advanced snakes have no remnants of limbs, but basal snakes such as pythons and boas do have traces of highly reduced, vestigial hind limbs. Python embryos even have fully developed hind limb buds, but their later development is stopped by the DNA mutations in the ZRS. Distribution <inaudible> 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 There are over 2,900 species of snakes ranging as far northward as the Arctic Circle in Scandinavia and southward through Australia. Snakes can be found on every continent except Antarctica, in the sea, and as high as 16,000 feet 4, meters in the Himalayan mountains of Asia. There are numerous islands from which snakes are absent, such as Ireland, Iceland, and New Zealand although New Zealand's waters are infrequently visited by the yellow-bellied sea snake and the banded sea crate. Topic. Taxonomy All modern snakes are grouped within the suborder Serpentes in Linnean taxonomy, part of the order Squamata, though their precise placement within squamates remains controversial. The two infraorders of Serpentes are Alethinophidia and Skulkophidia. This separation is based on morphological characteristics and mitochondrial DNA sequence similarity. Alethinophidia is sometimes split into Henophidia and Cenophidia, with the latter consisting of colubroid. Snakes, colubrids, vipers, lapids, hydrophyids, and atractospids, and acrocordids, while the other Alethinophidian families comprise Henophidia. While not extant today, the Madsoidae, a family of giant, primitive, python like snakes, was around until 50,000 years ago in Australia, represented by genera such as Wanambi. There are numerous debates in the systematics within the group. For instance, many sources classify Boidae and Pythonidae as one family, while some keep the Elapidae and Hydrophiidae sea snakes separate for practical reasons despite their extremely close relation. Recent molecular studies support the monophyly of the clades of modern snakes, Skulkophidians, Typhlopids plus Anomalepidids, Alethinophidians, Core Alethinophidians, Europeltids, Cylindrophus, Anomicolus, Europeltines, Macrostomatans, Buids, Boids, Pythonids, and Cenophidians. Topic: <laughs> Families. Topic. Legless lizards While snakes are limbless reptiles, which evolved from and are grouped with lizards, there are many other species of lizards which have lost their limbs independently and superficially look similar to snakes. These include the slowworm and glass snake. Topic. Biology Topic. Size The now extinct Titanoboa serehonensis snakes found were 12.8 meters 42 feet in length. By comparison, the largest extant snakes are the reticulated python, which measures about 6.95 meters (22.8 feet) long, and the green anaconda, which measures about 5.21 meters (17.1 feet) long and is considered the heaviest snake on earth at 97.5 kilograms (215 pounds). At the other end of the scale, the smallest extant snake is Leptotyphlops kale, with a length of about 10.4 centimeters (4.1 in. Most snakes are fairly small animals, approximately 1 meter (3.3 feet) in length. Topic: Perception. Pit vipers, pythons, and some boas have infrared sensitive receptors in deep grooves on the snout, which allow them to see 
the radiated heat of warm-blooded prey. In pit vipers, the grooves are located between the nostril and the eye in a large pit on each side of the head. Other infrared sensitive snakes have multiple, smaller labial pits lining the upper lip, just below the nostrils. Snakes use smell to track their prey. They smell by using their forked tongues to collect airborne particles, then passing them to the vomeronasal organ or Jacobson's organ in the mouth for examination. The fork in the tongue gives snakes a sort of directional sense of smell and taste simultaneously. They keep their tongues constantly in motion, sampling particles from the air, ground, and water, analyzing the chemicals found, and determining the presence of prey or predators in the local environment. In water-dwelling snakes, such as the anaconda, the tongue functions efficiently underwater. The underside is very sensitive to vibration. This allows snakes to be able to sense approaching animals by detecting faint vibrations in the ground. Snake vision varies greatly, from only being able to distinguish light from dark to keen eyesight, but the main trend is that their vision is adequate although not sharp, and allows them to track movements. Generally, vision is best in arboreal snakes and weakest in burrowing snakes. Some snakes, such as the Asian vine snake genus Ahitala, have binocular vision, with both eyes capable of focusing on the same point. Most snakes focus by moving the lens back and forth in relation to the retina, while in the other amniot groups, the lens is stretched. Many nocturnal snakes have slit pupils while diurnal snakes have round pupils. Skin The skin of a snake is covered in scales. Contrary to the popular notion of snakes being slimy because of possible confusion of snakes with worms, snakeskin has a smooth, dry texture. Most snakes use specialized belly scales to travel, gripping surfaces. The body scales may be smooth, keeled, or granular. The eyelids of a snake are transparent. Spectacle. Scales, which remain permanently closed, also known as brill. The shedding of scales is called ectasis or in normal usage, molting or sloughing. In the case of snakes, the complete outer layer of skin is shed in one layer. Snake scales are not discrete, but extensions of the epidermis. Hence they are not shed separately but as a complete outer layer during each molt, akin to a sock being turned inside out, snakes have a wide diversity of skin coloration patterns. These patterns are often related to behavior, such as a tendency to have to flee from predators. Snakes that are plain or have longitudinal stripes often have to escape from predators, with the pattern or lack thereof not providing reference points to predators, thus allowing the snake to escape without being noticed. Plain snakes usually adopt active hunting strategies, as their pattern allows them to send little information to prey about motion. Blotched snakes, on the other hand, usually use ambush-based strategies, likely because it helps them blend into an environment with irregularly shaped objects, like sticks or rocks. Spotted patterning can similarly help snakes to blend into their environment. The shape and number of scales on the head, back, and belly are often characteristic and used for taxonomic purposes. Scales are named mainly according to their positions on the body. In advanced Cenophidian snakes, the broad belly scales and rows of dorsal scales correspond to the vertebrae, allowing scientists to count the vertebrae without dissection. Topic: Molting. Molting or ectasis serves a number of functions. Firstly, the old and worn skin is replaced. Secondly, it helps get rid of parasites such as mites and ticks. Renewal of the skin by molting is supposed to allow growth in some animals such as insects. However, this has been disputed in the case of snakes. Molting occurs periodically throughout the snake's life. Before a molt, the snake stops eating and often hides or moves to a safe place. Just before shedding, the skin becomes dull and dry looking and the eyes become cloudy or blue colored. The inner surface of the old skin liquefies. This causes the old skin to separate from the new skin beneath it. After a few days, the eyes clear and the snake crawls out of its old skin. The old skin breaks near the mouth and the snake wriggles out, aided by rubbing against rough surfaces. 
In many cases, the cast skin peels backward over the body from head to tail in one piece, like pulling a sock off inside out. A new, larger, brighter layer of skin has formed underneath. An older snake may shed its skin only once or twice a year. But a younger snake, still growing, may shed up to four times a year. The discarded skin gives a perfect imprint of the scale pattern, and it is usually possible to identify the snake if the discarded skin is reasonably intact. This periodic renewal has led to the snake being a symbol of healing and medicine, as pictured in the rod of Asclepius. Scale counts can sometimes be used to tell the sex of a snake when the species is not distinctly sexually dimorphic. A probe is inserted into the cloaca until it can go no further. The probe is marked at the point where it stops, removed, and compared to the subcaudal depth by laying it alongside the scales. The scalation count determines whether the snake is a male or female as hemipennes of a male will probe to a different depth usually longer than the cloaca of a female. <laughs> Skeleton The skeleton of most snakes consists solely of the skull, hyoid, vertebral column, and ribs, though henophidian snakes retain vestiges of the pelvis and rear limbs. The skull of the snake consists of a solid and complete neurocranium, to which many of the other bones are only loosely attached, particularly the highly mobile jaw bones, which facilitate manipulation and ingestion of large prey items. The left and right sides of the lower jaw are joined only by a flexible ligament at the anterior tips, allowing them to separate widely, while the posterior end of the lower jaw bones articulate with a quadrate bone, allowing further mobility. The bones of the mandible and quadrate bones can also pick up ground-borne vibrations. Because the sides of the jaw can move independently of one another, snakes resting their jaws on a surface have sensitive stereo hearing which can detect the position of prey. The jaw quadrate stapes pathway is capable of detecting vibrations on the angstrom scale, despite the absence of an outer ear and the ossicle mechanism of impedance matching used in other vertebrates to receive vibrations from the air. The hyoid is a small bone located posterior and ventral to the skull, in the neck region, which serves as an attachment for muscles of the snake's tongue, as it does in all other tetrapods. The vertebral column consists of anywhere between 200 and 400 or more vertebrae. Tail vertebrae are comparatively few in number, often less than 20% of the total, and lack ribs, while body vertebrae each have two ribs articulating with them. The vertebrae have projections that allow for strong muscle attachment, enabling locomotion without limbs. Autotomy of the tail, a feature found in some lizards, is absent in most snakes. Caudal autotomy in snakes is rare and is intervertebral, unlike that in lizards, which is intravertebral. That is, the break happens along a predefined fracture plane present on a vertebra. In some snakes, most notably boas and pythons, there are vestiges of the hind limbs in the form of a pair of pelvic spurs. These small, claw-like protrusions on each side of the cloaca are the external portion of the vestigial hindlime skeleton, which includes the remains of an ilium and femur. Snakes are polypheodonts with teeth that are continuously replaced. <inaudible> <inaudible> internal organs Snakes and other reptiles have a three-chambered heart that controls the circulatory system via the left and right atrium, and one ventricle. The snake's heart is encased in a sac, called the pericardium, located at the bifurcation of the bronchi. The heart is able to move around, however, owing to the lack of a diaphragm. This adjustment protects the heart from potential damage when large ingested prey is passed through the esophagus. The spleen is attached to the gall bladder and pancreas and filters the blood. The thymus is located in fatty tissue above the heart and is responsible for the generation of immune cells in the blood. The cardiovascular system of snakes is also unique for the presence of a renal portal system in which the blood from the snake's tail passes through the kidneys before returning to the heart. The vestigial left lung is often small or sometimes even absent, as snakes' tubular bodies require all of their organs to be long and thin. In the majority of species, only one lung is functional. This lung contains a vascularized anterior portion and a posterior portion that does not function in gas exchange. 
This saccular lung is used for hydrostatic purposes to adjust buoyancy in some aquatic snakes and its function remains unknown in terrestrial species. Many organs that are paired, such as kidneys or reproductive organs, are staggered within the body, with one located ahead of the other. Snakes have no lymph nodes. Topic: <inaudible> Venom. Cobras, vipers, and closely related species use venom to immobilize or kill their prey. The venom is modified saliva delivered through fangs. The fangs of advanced venomous snakes like viperids and elapids are hollow to inject venom more effectively, while the fangs of rear-fanged snakes such as the boomslang merely have a groove on the posterior edge to channel venom into the wound. Snake venoms are often prey-specific. Their role in self-defense is secondary. Venom, like all salivary secretions, is a predigestant that initiates the breakdown of food into soluble compounds, facilitating proper digestion. Even non-venomous snake bites like any animal bite will cause tissue damage. Certain birds, mammals, and other snakes such as king snakes that prey on venomous snakes have developed resistance and even immunity to certain venoms. Venomous snakes include 3 families of snakes and do not constitute a formal classification group used in taxonomy. The colloquial term poisonous snake is generally an incorrect label for snakes. A poison is inhaled or ingested, whereas venom produced by snakes is injected into its victim via fangs. There are, however, two exceptions. Rhabdophus sequesters toxins from the toads it eats, then secretes them from nuchal glands to ward off predators, and a small unusual population of garter snakes in the U.S. state of Oregon retains enough toxins in their livers from the newts they eat to be effectively poisonous to small local predators such as crows and foxes. Snake venoms are complex mixtures of proteins, and are stored in venom glands at the back of the head. In all venomous snakes, these glands open through ducts into grooved or hollow teeth in the upper jaw. These proteins can potentially be a mix of neurotoxins which attack the nervous system, hemotoxins which attack the circulatory system, cytotoxins, bungarotoxins and many other toxins that affect the body in different ways. Almost all snake venom contains hyaluronidase, an enzyme that ensures rapid diffusion of the venom. Venomous snakes that use hemotoxins usually have fangs in the front of their mouths, making it easier for them to inject the venom into their victims. Some snakes that use neurotoxins, such as the mangrove snake, have fangs in the back of their mouths, with the fangs curled backwards. This makes it difficult both for the snake to use its venom and for scientists to milk them. Elapids, however, such as cobras and crates are protroglyphous. They possess hollow fangs that cannot be erected toward the front of their mouths, and cannot stab like a viper. They must actually bite the victim. It has recently been suggested that all snakes may be venomous to a certain degree, with harmless snakes having weak venom and no fangs. Most snakes currently labeled non-venomous would still be considered harmless according to this theory, as they either lack a venom delivery method or are incapable of delivering enough to endanger a human. This theory postulates that snakes may have evolved from a common lizard ancestor that was venomous, and that venomous lizards like the Gila monster, beaded lizard, monitor lizards, and the now extinct mosasaurs may also have derived from it. They share this venom clade with various other saurian species. Venomous snakes are classified in two taxonomic families Elapids, cobras including king cobras, crates, mumbas, Australian copperheads, sea snakes, and coral snakes. Viperids, vipers, rattlesnakes, copperheads, cottonmouths, and bushmasters. There is a third family containing the opistoglyphus rear-fanged snakes as well as the majority of other snake species. Colubrids, boomslangs, tree snakes, vine snakes, mangrove snakes, although not all colubrids are venomous. Topic: <reproduction>, reproduction. Although a wide range of reproductive modes are used by snakes, all snakes employ internal fertilization. This is accomplished by means of paired, forked hemipennase, which are stored, inverted, in the male's tail. 
The hemipenes are often grooved, hooked, or spined in order to grip the walls of the female's cloaca. Most species of snakes lay eggs which they abandon shortly after laying. However, a few species, such as the king cobra, actually construct nests and stay in the vicinity of the hatchlings after incubation. Most pythons coil around their egg clutches and remain with them until they hatch. A female python will not leave the eggs, except to occasionally bask in the sun or drink water. She will even shiver to generate heat to incubate the eggs. Some species of snake are ovoviviparous and retain the eggs within their bodies until they are almost ready to hatch. Recently, it has been confirmed that several species of snake are fully viviparous, such as the boa constrictor and green anaconda, nourishing their young through a placenta as well as a yolk sac, which is highly unusual among reptiles, or anything else outside of requiem sharks or placental mammals. Retention of eggs and live birth are most often associated with colder environments. Sexual selection in snakes is demonstrated by the 3,000 species that each use different tactics in acquiring mates. Ritual combat between males for the females they want to mate with includes topping, a behavior exhibited by most viperids in which one male will twist around the vertically elevated forebody of its opponent and forcing it downward. It is common for neck biting to occur while the snakes are entwined. Topic. Facultative parthenogenesis Parthenogenesis is a natural form of reproduction in which growth and development of embryos occur without fertilization. Agistrodon contortrix copperhead and Agistrodon piscivorus cotton mouth can reproduce by facultative parthenogenesis. That is, they are capable of switching from a sexual mode of reproduction to an asexual mode. The type of parthenogenesis that likely occurs is automixis with terminal fusion, a process in which two terminal products from the same meiosis fuse to form a diploid zygote. This process leads to genome-wide homozygosity, expression of deleterious recessive alleles and often to developmental abnormalities. Both captive-born and wild-born A. contortrix and A. piscivorus appear to be capable of this form of parthenogenesis. Reproduction in squamate reptiles is almost exclusively sexual. Males ordinarily have a ZZ pair of sex-determining chromosomes, and females a ZW pair. However, the Colombian rainbow boa, Epicrates maurus can also reproduce by facultative parthenogenesis resulting in production of WW female progeny. The WW females are likely produced by terminal automixis. Topic: Behavior. Topic: Winter dormancy. In regions where winters are colder than snakes can tolerate while remaining active, local species will brumate. Unlike hibernation, in which mammals are actually asleep, brumating reptiles are awake but inactive. Individual snakes may brumate in burrows, under rock piles, or inside fallen trees, or snakes may aggregate in large numbers at hibernacula. <laughs> Feeding and diet All snakes are strictly carnivorous, eating small animals including lizards, frogs, other snakes, small mammals, birds, eggs, fish, snails or insects. 3. Because snakes cannot bite or tear their food to pieces, they must swallow prey whole. The body size of a snake has a major influence on its eating habits. Smaller snakes eat smaller prey. Juvenile pythons might start out feeding on lizards or mice and graduate to small deer or antelope as an adult, for example. The snake's jaw is a complex structure. Contrary to the popular belief that snakes can dislocate their jaws, snakes have a very flexible lower jaw, the two halves of which are not rigidly attached, and numerous other joints in their skull, see snake skull allowing them to open their mouths wide enough to swallow their prey whole, even if it is larger in diameter than the snake itself. For example, the African egg-eating snake has flexible jaws adapted for eating eggs much larger than the diameter of its head. 
This snake has no teeth, but does have bony protrusions on the inside edge of its spine, which it uses to break shells when it eats eggs. While the majority of snakes eat a variety of prey animals, there is some specialization by some species. King cobras and the Australian bandy bandy consume other snakes. Snakes of the family Pariidae have more teeth on the right side of their mouths than on the left, as the shells of their prey usually spiral clockwise. Some snakes have a venomous bite, which they use to kill their prey before eating it. Other snakes kill their prey by constriction. Still others swallow their prey whole and alive. After eating, snakes become dormant while the process of digestion takes place. Digestion is an intense activity, especially after consumption of large prey. In species that feed only sporadically, the entire intestine enters a reduced state between meals to conserve energy. The digestive system is then up -regulated to full capacity within 48 hours of prey consumption. Being ectothermic cold -blooded, the surrounding temperature plays a large role in snake digestion. The ideal temperature for snakes to digest is 30 degrees Celsius 86 degrees Fahrenheit. So much metabolic energy is involved in a snake's digestion that in the Mexican rattlesnake Crotalus durosus, surface body temperature increases by as much as 1.2 degrees Celsius 2.2 degrees Fahrenheit during the digestive process. Because of this, a snake disturbed after having eaten recently will often regurgitate its prey to be able to escape the perceived threat. When undisturbed, the digestive process is highly efficient, with the snake's digestive enzymes dissolving and absorbing everything but the prey's hair or feathers and claws, which are excreted along with waste. YouTube video of a garter snake swallowing a frog. Topic. Locomotion The lack of limbs does not impede the movement of snakes. They have developed several different modes of locomotion to deal with particular environments. Unlike the gates of limbed animals, which form a continuum, each mode of snake locomotion is discrete and distinct from the others, transitions between modes are abrupt. Lateral undulation Lateral undulation is the sole mode of aquatic locomotion, and the most common mode of terrestrial locomotion. In this mode, the body of the snake alternately flexes to the left and right, resulting in a series of rearward moving waves. While this movement appears rapid, snakes have rarely been documented moving faster than two body lengths per second, often much less. This mode of movement has the same net cost of transport calories burned per meter moved as running in lizards of the same mass. Terrestrial lateral undulation is the most common mode of terrestrial locomotion for most snake species. In this mode, the posteriorly moving waves push against contact points in the environment, such as rocks, twigs, irregularities in the soil, etc. Each of these environmental objects, in turn, generates a reaction force directed forward and towards the midline of the snake, resulting in forward thrust while the lateral components cancel out. The speed of this movement depends upon the density of push points in the environment, with a medium density of about 8 along the snake's length being ideal. The wave speed is precisely the same as the snake speed, and as a result, every point on the snake's body follows the path of the point ahead of it, allowing snakes to move through very dense vegetation and small openings. When swimming, the waves become larger as they move down the snake's body, and the wave travels backwards faster than the snake moves forwards. Thrust is generated by pushing their body against the water, resulting in the observed slip. In spite of overall similarities, studies show that the pattern of muscle activation is different in aquatic versus terrestrial lateral undulation, which justifies calling them separate modes. All snakes can laterally undulate forward with backward moving waves, but only sea snakes have been observed reversing the motion, moving backwards with forward moving waves. Topic. Sidewinding. 
most often employed by colubroid snakes colubrids, lapids, and vipers when the snake must move in an environment that lacks irregularities to push against rendering lateral undulation impossible, such as a slick mud flat, or a sand dune. Sidewinding is a modified form of lateral undulation in which all of the body segments oriented in one direction remain in contact with the ground, while the other segments are lifted up, resulting in a peculiar rolling motion. This mode of locomotion overcomes the slippery nature of sand or mud by pushing off with only static portions on the body, thereby minimizing slipping. The static nature of the contact points can be shown from the tracks of a sidewinding snake, which show each belly scale imprint, without any smearing. This mode of locomotion has very low caloric cost, less than one-third of the cost for a lizard to move the same distance. Contrary to popular belief, there is no evidence that sidewinding is associated with the sand being hot. Concertina When push points are absent, but there is not enough space to use sidewinding because of lateral constraints, such as in tunnels, snakes rely on concertina locomotion. In this mode, the snake braces the posterior portion of its body against the tunnel wall while the front of the snake extends and straightens. The front portion then flexes and forms an anchor point, and the posterior is straightened and pulled forwards. This mode of locomotion is slow and very demanding, up to seven times the cost of laterally undulating over the same distance. This high cost is due to the repeated stops and starts of portions of the body as well as the necessity of using active muscular effort to brace against the tunnel walls. Topic. Arboreal The movement of snakes in arboreal habitats has only recently been studied. While on tree branches, snakes use several modes of locomotion depending on species and bark texture. In general, snakes will use a modified form of concertina locomotion on smooth branches, but will laterally undulate if contact points are available. Snakes move faster on small branches and when contact points are present, in contrast to limbed animals, which do better on large branches with little clutter. Gliding snakes of Southeast Asia launch themselves from branch tips, spreading their ribs and laterally undulating as they glide between trees. These snakes can perform a controlled glide for hundreds of feet depending upon launch altitude and can even turn in midair. Topic. Rectilinea The slowest mode of snake locomotion is rectilinear locomotion, which is also the only one where the snake does not need to bend its body laterally, though it may do so when turning. In this mode, the belly scales are lifted and pulled forward before being placed down and the body pulled over them. Waves of movement and stasis pass posteriorly, resulting in a series of ripples in the skin. The ribs of the snake do not move in this mode of locomotion and this method is most often used by large pythons, boas, and vipers when stalking prey across open ground as the snake's movements are subtle and harder to detect by their prey in this manner. Topic: <laughs> Interactions with humans. Topic: Bite Snakes do not ordinarily prey on humans. Unless startled or injured, most snakes prefer to avoid contact and will not attack humans. With the exception of large constrictors, nonvenomous snakes are not a threat to humans. The bite of a nonvenomous snake is usually harmless, their teeth are not adapted for tearing or inflicting a deep puncture wound, but rather grabbing and holding. Although the possibility of infection and tissue damage is present in the bite of a non-venomous snake, venomous snakes present far greater hazard to humans. The World Health Organization who lists snake bite under the other neglected conditions category, documented deaths resulting from snake bites are uncommon. Non-fatal bites from venomous snakes may result in the need for amputation of a limb or part thereof. Of the roughly 725 species of venomous snakes worldwide, only 250 are able to kill a human with one bite. 
Australia averages only one fatal snake bite per year. In India, 250,000 snake bites are recorded in a single year, with as many as 50,000 recorded initial deaths. The WHO estimates that on the order of 100,000 people die each year as a result of snake bites, and around three times as many amputations and other permanent disabilities are caused by snake bites annually. The treatment for a snake bite is as variable as the bite itself. The most common and effective method is through antivenom or antivenin, a serum made from the venom of the snake. Some antivenom is species-specific while some is made for use with multiple species in mind polyvalent. In the United States for example, all species of venomous snakes are pit vipers, with the exception of the coral snake. To produce antivenom, a mixture of the venoms of the different species of rattlesnakes, copperheads, and cottonmouths is injected into the body of a horse in ever-increasing dosages until the horse is immunized. Blood is then extracted from the immunized horse. The serum is separated and further purified and freeze-dried. It is reconstituted with sterile water and becomes antivenom. For this reason, people who are allergic to horses are more likely to suffer an allergic reaction to antivenom. Antivenom for the more dangerous species such as mumbas, taipans, and cobras is made in a similar manner in India, South Africa, and Australia, although these antivenoms are species-specific. <laughs> Snake charmers In some parts of the world, especially in India, snake charming is a roadside show performed by a charmer. In such a show, the snake charmer carries a basket that contains a snake that he seemingly charms by playing tunes from his flute-like musical instrument, to which the snake responds. Snakes lack external ears, though they do have internal ears, and respond to the movement of the flute, not the actual noise. The Wildlife Protection Act of 1972 in India technically prescribes snake charming on grounds of reducing animal cruelty. Other snake charmers also have a snake and mongoose show, where both the animals have a mock fight, however, this is not very common, as the snakes, as well as the mongooses, may be seriously injured or killed. Snake charming as a profession is dying out in India because of competition from modern forms of entertainment and environment laws prescribing the practice. Topic: <trapping>, trapping. The Arulas tribe of Andhra Pradesh and Tamil Nadu in India have been hunter-gatherers in the hot dry plains forests and have practiced the art of snake catching for generations. They have a vast knowledge of snakes in the field. They generally catch the snakes with the help of a simple stick. Earlier, the Arulas caught thousands of snakes for the snakeskin industry. After the complete ban of the snakeskin industry in India and protection of all snakes under the Indian Wildlife Protection Act 1972, they formed the Arula Snake Catchers Cooperative and switched to catching snakes for removal of venom, releasing them in the wild after four extractions. The venom so collected is used for producing life-saving antivenom, biomedical research and for other medicinal products. The arulas are also known to eat some of the snakes they catch and are very useful in rat extermination in the villages. Despite the existence of snake charmers, there have also been professional snake catchers or wranglers. Modern-day snake trapping involves a herpetologist using a long stick with a V-shaped end. Some television show hosts, like Bill Hast, Austin Stevens, Steve Irwin, and Jeff Corwin, prefer to catch them using bare hands. Topic: <laughs> Consumption. While not commonly thought of as food in most cultures, in some cultures the consumption of snakes is acceptable or even considered a delicacy, prized for its alleged pharmaceutical effect of warming the heart. Snake soup of Cantonese cuisine is consumed by local people in autumn, to warm up their body. Western cultures document the consumption of snakes under extreme circumstances of hunger. Cooked rattlesnake meat is an exception, which is commonly consumed in parts of the Midwestern United States. In Asian countries such as China, Taiwan, Thailand, Indonesia, Vietnam and Cambodia, drinking the blood of snakes—particularly the cobra, is believed to increase sexual virility. 
The blood is drained while the cobra is still alive when possible, and is usually mixed with some form of liquor to improve the taste. In some Asian countries, the use of snakes in alcohol is also accepted. In such cases, the body of a snake or several snakes is left to steep in a jar or container of liquor. It is claimed that this makes the liquor stronger as well as more expensive. One example of this is the habu snake sometimes placed in the Okinawan liquor awamori also known as habu sake. Snake wine shiju is an alcoholic beverage produced by infusing whole snakes in rice wine or grain alcohol. The drink was first recorded to have been consumed in China during the Western Zhou dynasty and considered an important curative and believed to reinvigorate a person according to traditional Chinese medicine. <laughs> Pets In the Western world, some snakes especially docile species such as the ball python and corn snake are kept as pets. To meet this demand a captive breeding industry has developed. Snakes bred in captivity tend to make better pets and are considered preferable to wild-caught specimens. Snakes can be very low-maintenance pets, especially compared to more traditional species. They require minimal space, as most common species do not exceed 5 feet meters in length. Pet snakes can be fed relatively infrequently, usually once every 5 to 14 days. Certain snakes have a lifespan of more than 40 years if given proper care. Symbolism In ancient Mesopotamia, Nira, the messenger god of Istaran, was represented as a serpent on Kadurus, or boundary stones. Representations of two intertwined serpents are common in Sumerian art and Neo-Sumerian artwork and still appear sporadically on cylinder seals and amulets until as late as the 13th century BC. The horn viper Kerastes Kerastes appears in Kassite and Neo-Assyrian Kadurus and is invoked in Assyrian texts as a magical protective entity. A dragon-like creature with horns, the body and neck of a snake, the forelegs of a lion, and the hind legs of a bird appears in Mesopotamian art from the Akkadian period until the Hellenistic period 323 BC to 31 BC. This creature, known in Akkadian as the Mushasu, meaning, "...furious serpent", was used as a symbol for particular deities and also as a general protective emblem. It seems to have originally been the attendant of the underworld god Ninazu, but later became the attendant to the Hurrian storm god Tishpak, as well as, later, Ninazu's son Ningishzida, the Babylonian national god Marduk, the scribal god Nabu, and the Assyrian national god Ashur. In Egyptian history, the snake occupies a primary role with the Nile cobra adorning the crown of the pharaoh in ancient times. It was worshipped as one of the gods and was also used for sinister purposes, murder of an adversary and ritual suicide Cleopatra. The Ouroboros was a well-known ancient Egyptian symbol of a serpent swallowing its own tail. The precursor to the Ouroboros was the many-faced a serpent with five heads, who, according to the Amduat, the oldest surviving book of the afterlife, was said to coil around the corpse of the sun god Ra protectively. The earliest surviving depiction of a true Ouroboros comes from the gilded shrines in the tomb of Tutankhamun. In the early centuries AD, the Ouroboros was adopted as a symbol by Gnostic Christians and chapter 136 of the Pistis Sophia, an early Gnostic text, describes a great dragon whose tail is in its mouth. In medieval alchemy, the Ouroboros became a typical Western dragon with wings, legs, and a tail. In the Bible, King Nahash of Ammon, whose name means snake, is depicted very negatively, as a particularly cruel and despicable enemy of the ancient Hebrews. The ancient Greeks used the Gorgonion, a depiction of a hideous face with serpents for hair, as an apotropaic symbol to ward off evil. In a Greek myth described by Pseudo Apollodorus in his Bibliotheca, Medusa was a gorgon with serpents for hair whose gaze turned all those who looked at her to stone and was slain by the hero Perseus. In the Roman poet Ovid's Metamorphoses, Medusa is said to have once been a beautiful priestess of Athena, whom Athena turned into a serpent haired monster after she was raped by the god Poseidon in Athena's temple. 
In another myth referenced by the Boeotian poet Hesiod and described in detail by Pseudo Apollodorus, the hero Heracles is said to have slain the Lernaean Hydra, a multiple headed serpent which dwelt in the swamps of Lerna. The legendary account of the foundation of Thebes mentioned a monster snake guarding the spring from which the new settlement was to draw its water. In fighting and killing the snake, the companions of the founder Cadmus all perished, leading to the term, Cadmian victory i.e. a victory involving one's own ruin. Three medical symbols involving snakes that are still used today are bowl of Hygieia, symbolizing pharmacy, and the caduceus and rod of Asclepius, which are symbols denoting medicine in general. One of the etymologies proposed for the common female first name Linda is that it might derive from Old German Lindy or Linda, meaning a serpent. India is often called the land of snakes and is steeped in tradition regarding snakes. Snakes are worshipped as gods even today with many women pouring milk on snake pits despite snakes' aversion for milk. The cobra is seen on the neck of Shiva and Vishnu is depicted often as sleeping on a seven-headed snake or within the coils of a serpent. There are also several temples in India solely for cobras sometimes called Nagraj king of snakes and it is believed that snakes are symbols of fertility. There is a Hindu festival called Nag Panchami each year on which day snakes are venerated and prayed to. See also Naga. In India, there is another mythology about snakes. Commonly known in Hindi as Ikchadari snakes. Such snakes can take the form of any living creature, but prefer human form. These mythical snakes possess a valuable gem called Mani, which is more brilliant than diamond. There are many stories in India about greedy people trying to possess this gem and ending up getting killed. The snake is one of the twelve celestial animals of Chinese zodiac. In the Chinese calendar, many ancient Peruvian cultures worshipped nature. They emphasized animals and often depicted snakes in their art. Topic: <inaudible> Religion. Snakes are a part of Hindu worship. A festival, Nag Panchami, in which participants worship either images of or live Nagas cobras is celebrated every year. Most images of Lord Shiva depict snake around his neck. Puranas have various stories associated with snakes. In the Puranas, Shesha is said to hold all the planets of the universe on his hoods and to constantly sing the glories of Vishnu from all his mouths. He is sometimes referred to as Ananta Shesha which means, endless shesha. Other notable snakes in Hinduism are Ananta, Vasuki, Taksak, Karkataka and Pingala. The term Naga is used to refer to entities that take the form of large snakes in Hinduism and Buddhism. Snakes have also been widely revered, such as in ancient Greece, where the serpent was seen as a healer. Asclepius carried a serpent wound around his wand, a symbol seen today on many ambulances. In religious terms, the snake and jaguar are arguably the most important animals in ancient Mesoamerica. In states of ecstasy, lords dance a serpent dance, great descending snakes adorn and support buildings from Chichen Itza to Tenochtitlan, and the Nahuatl word coatl meaning serpent or twin, forms part of primary deities such as Mixcothal, Quetzalcoatl, and Kotlaku. In both Maya and Aztec calendars, the fifth day of the week was known as Snake Day. In Judaism, the snake of brass is also a symbol of healing, of one's life being saved from imminent death. In some parts of Christianity, Christ's redemptive work is compared to saving one's life through beholding the Nehushtan, serpent of brass. Snake handlers use snakes as an integral part of church worship in order to exhibit their faith in divine protection. However, more commonly in Christianity, the serpent has been seen as a representative of evil and sly plotting, which can be seen in the description in Genesis chapter 3 of a snake in the Garden of Eden tempting Eve. Saint Patrick is reputed to have expelled all snakes from Ireland while converting the country to Christianity in the 5th century, thus explaining the absence of snakes there. In Christianity and Judaism, the snake makes its infamous appearance in the first book of the Bible when a serpent appears before the first couple Adam and Eve and tempts them with the forbidden fruit from the tree of knowledge. 
The snake returns in Exodus when Moses, as a sign of God's power, turns his staff into a snake and when Moses made the Nehushtan, a bronze snake on a pole that when looked at cured the people of bites from the snakes that plagued them in the desert. The serpent makes its final appearance symbolizing Satan in the Book of Revelation. And he laid hold on the dragon the old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him for a thousand years. In neo paganism and Wicca, the snake is seen as a symbol of wisdom and knowledge. <inaudible> Medicine Several compounds from snake venoms are being researched as potential treatments or preventatives for pain, cancers, arthritis, stroke, heart disease, hemophilia, and hypertension, and to control bleeding, e.g., during surgery equals equals see also